for me personally, when approaching the role, it, it, it's sort of hard to figure out because there's so many things that he gets hit with. I think that Donnie is what he comes in contact with. In the simplest terms, like in more, most abstract terms, I could say it's a, it's a journey. Like it's just a journey about discovering who you are. And the irony of the whole thing is that like hopefully by the end, it's not only Donnie who realizes it, but the audience in a way. And they have to go back and they have to watch it again. And they have to watch it again. But um, it's, just, it's just like this ridiculous, fantastic, completely absurd, yet completely naturalistic and realistic um, mixture of humor, like sadness, comedy, and madness, like rolled up in this ball of this like crazy story journey. It forces you, if it does force you at all, to come to your own conclusion about what it's about. And that's the coolest thing. It's like an individual experience for everyone. It's not about one thing, which in, I think the coolest thing about talking about it is that no one can really come to any finite or like objective conclusion. It's interesting to get both perspectives. You know, like you see her, you work with her as an actress and as a fellow actor, and then you work with her on like a business level too. And to watch her work, it's, it's funny because, you know, I turn to her and I say, God, they don't give me another take. And, and she's saying, and she's like, there's a part of her that wants to say, you need another take. And then another part of her that says, but we're kind of like, we shouldn't, we need to move on. You know, so there's like this balance and she works those two brilliantly. It's hard to describe how Rose fits in. I think basically uh, Rose's line through is about a, a woman who's trying to, in her very human way, move forward with this, what seems to be disassembling of her son. When I first read Donnie Darko, I was quite moved by it. Um, I had, uh, I finished the script and kind of walked around a little bit in a daze, to be perfectly honest. I, um, I found it an uncanny combination of tragedy and extraordinary uplift. And I couldn't quite define why it carried both of those things, so I became immediately interested. I'm thrilled to be with Jake on this movie because I see he's really at the beginning of something very big, not only with this movie but with the rest of his career. I mean, it gives me a lot of hope. Richard Kelly has given all of us, I think, an opportunity to explore our characters with a lot of freedom. He wrote it, but he will let us make some of the lines a little bit more our own, or maybe tag out a scene with something that comes during the shooting of the scene. To me, that's the mark of a good director who, who is spontaneous on the set, who will let things happen on the set, you know. Well, <laughs> well, one thing you have to enjoy a little bit is something like this, the weirdness of, uh, of uh, Jeff J. Gyllenhaal. <laughs> you see what I'm saying when he messes yeah. around to get reactions out of you? Holmes Osborne is an amazing actor. Oh, you're sweet. You're so sweet. I was thrilled to hear that I was working with Mary McDonald, you know, uh, uh, I don't like awards, I don't, I don't believe in awards, but nevertheless, when you work with somebody who is a two-time Oscar nominee, you know, uh, for Passion Fish and for uh, Dances with Wolves, uh, you, you gotta be, you gotta be excited about working with somebody of that caliber. I play Elizabeth Darko. I am Donnie Darko's older sister, and um, I'm kind of like, you know, the disgruntled teenage older sister, you know, and at the um, sort of the middle end of the movie, I get into Harvard, actually. It's complicated to play a period piece that's not too long ago, because you don't really have an objectivity on it. It's still um, sort of blurry and a part of the present, in a way. 
Jake and I are both each other's yeah. toughest critic. And um, so to work together, especially as brother and sister, I think we really demand a lot from each other and, and challenge each other to, to go places that maybe we wouldn't otherwise go. The movie can be about a lot of different things, but you know, from the very first time I read it, I could sum it up in one word. The movie's about possibilities. Probably something else I got from the film too is it doesn't, that, that I think fate works on, an, on another level too, that no matter what you do, certain things are inevitable and they will happen. And although you can change the course of your life, there's other things that no matter what you do to change it are inevitable and will happen. And so that's all of fate and, you know, being in control and not being in control at the same time, if that makes sense. I play Gretchen Ross. Um, she's new to the town. She had to move because her parents were divorced. And she's kind of leaving, you know, a bad situation with her dad. Um, and she kind of plays his love interest. The moment she comes into class, they kind of have this connection. Well, the first time I, I read the script, I was like, I don't, I, I can't even imagine what so, sort of director is going to be able to attack this material. And when I found out that the writer was going to attack the material, I was so excited. I really like this character, Mrs. Pomeroy. She, um, she doesn't smile a lot, which is nice because I am just ridiculous clown face, you know, all the time, you know, I constantly look like some zany freak and it's very nice to be sort of contained and this level of maturity that she has in leading these kids, you know, into profound thinking and wonderful literature is so where it's at for me and all I want to do in my life. So to get to play a woman that's really in touch with that is just great. It has this beautiful poetic aspect of it of how these characters are all so deep and interesting and yet Richard's adding this lightness into it where there's such a lack of a patronizing this is the way it is it's almost it just opens the doors if anything to all the possibilities. I was just so amazed uh, first of all you have so much trust in someone when they write something so extraordinary as his script and then speaking with him the fact that he was able to articulate all the genius that resides inside of him I was so excited to work under his direction and try and you know do anything I could to enable the, the movie getting made I love Jake Gyllenhaal he's incredible the fact that fate has made him be Donnie it makes me I always love and appreciate fate, but this, this, the road that we got to him and the fact that he is this character, and I swear he is this character, is the most incredible thing in the world. And the more time I spend with him, the more blown away by him I am. I think they can expect a, a good thought-provoking movie um, that has emotional provocation as well. Um, but again, there's a light-hearted aspect of it that really makes you enjoy it and want to embrace it. I play Dr. Kenneth Monatoff, a physics teacher, a young, fairly with it, fairly accessible uh, teacher who uh, Donnie comes to with some questions about the probability of time travel, uh, which my character is fairly well versed in, apparently. And uh, I give him a little advice, but uh, I'm one of the good teachers. It was just a very well thought out, very intelligent, thought provoking screenplay that uh, was about young kids, but certainly not the kind of young kids movie that we've been seeing a lot of these last couple of years. In fact, it was almost the, the mirror antithesis of what we usually see. Maybe an explanation of parallel universes and time travel. Uh, maybe just a fairy tale. I play Dr. Lillian Thurman. I am a psychiatrist. I am Donnie Darko's psychiatrist. So I hear everything. I thought it was a, a good story, interesting characters, and uh, intelligent. Funny touching, everything. 
Jake is extremely talented. He's a lot of fun. He's uh, great to work with. Uh, he's, uh, he's serious without being overly so. You know, he's got a great sense of humor. I'm enjoying it, enjoying it very much. I think the best movies are the ones that you talk about on the ride home from the theater. And I think I'll always try to make movies that people will talk about, you know, well into the next couple of days after they get back from the theater and, and, and movies that people will want to go see a second and third time and, and, um, and um, I hope that this is one of those movies. I think Donnie Darko is, is like a lot of people that I grew up with. I think he's a lot of people that I know and continue to know. I think there's a side to who the character is um, that is someone that everyone wants to be, um, someone that everyone wishes they weren't, someone that, it, that everyone knows that they were at one point in their life. Um, and uh, certainly a character that I hope people won't forget anytime soon. Patrick was incredibly generous and uh, had a great sense of humor about the role he was playing and, and was incredibly open to anything that I asked him to do. And, uh, and he had no, no sense of, of vanity or attitude or anything about it. It's going to really make people think because there's a lot of every little moment in this story is in there for a reason. Every little set piece is in there for a reason. Every little character moment is in there for a reason. There's not a shot in this film that doesn't mean something. You look at him, you meet him, and you, he's just very, not so much introverted, but just very calm. And um, then you read what he's written, and it, you don't know where it comes from. He is a teenager, but he's, he's, uh, he's very intelligent, and it, a lot of the theme has to do with the fact that, that you have to save yourself, and that your parents can't save you, and that um, what all of these outside influences tell you, you need to take all of those and make up your own decisions. I think that we'd be selling ourselves short if we sold it as a teen movie, um, because it's a uh, it's very mature. I think it's going to inspire teenagers and I hope that they are thankful that we're not feeding them the same um, mediocre um, assumptions about their lives. Working with, you know, with Nancy Javone and with, with Richard Kelly, with Sean McKittrick, with Drew Barrymore, with our line producer Tom Hayslip. I mean, it's been a, you know, every, Steve Poster, the DP. It became kind of a labor of love for everybody, you know, and everyone buckled up, worked very hard on it. It came together quite quickly once we you know, assembled our team. And it's just been, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit, I love the team and I love the results. To kind of see the, the suburbs in the late 80s again, which was a really kind of an interesting time and to hear that music and be nostalgic. But I think for the most part, it's, it's, it's seeing young kids behave as adults. They have to save themselves. One of, the, one of the things that Richard and I were both adamant about and we, we were able to, to, uh, to do is that this is a widescreen movie. Um, it takes it out of the realm of a smaller movie and moves it into real moviedom. And because of that, it allows us to compose and tell a story with a different canvas than normal, normally first-time directors work with.